Welcome back to Let's Have It Out. We are joined by our guests as we are talking about books and whether or not the culture of reading is supported in this country and how much of a factor the cost of books has uh, in terms of our culture of reading and supporting our reading habits. So let's talk solutions now. I think, um, you know, the, the study that was done that was commissioned by the, the Department of Arts and Culture was talking about you know, the various factors that influence the pricing and the costing of books in South Africa. And of course, there are some suggestions about what can be done um, in order to bring some of those down, in order for us to have these books become more accessible. And one of those was dropping VAT on books. And I would wonder what you have to say about that. Well, look, South Africa makes approximately 3.6 billion rands um, on, on the book industry. And you mentioned that 70% of that is academic books. Mm. Now, I don't see the point in um, going to go and get VAT from that 3.6 billion. It doesn't mm. make any sense. Mm. It's not like we're losing much. But we have much more to gain. If we take away the VAT from books, it may not um, radically decrease the prices. But I think it's a great symbol mm. you know, to the nation to say we're trying to build a reading nation. Yeah. Um, I think more than that, um, I wrote a book called Gassi Nerd, and I realized um, that people actually don't have relevant reading material. You know, a lot of people said, no, this is the first fiction book that I've ever read. And I'm like, wow, wow. you're missing out on a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, they need to start to uh, fund authors to ensure that they are able not only to have livelihoods, um, but to publish books so that you can have um, more of a relevant choice, yeah. you know, in terms of reading material. So that's the costing element of it. Mm -hmm. I think moving beyond that, um, in order for us to spread a culture of leading, reading, I think we need a general culture of learning. Mm -hmm. um, as an entrepreneur, I mean, Samsung um, is spending 191 billion rands on research and development. Compare that to the entire South African private sector, mm. which spends 29 billion on research and development. Wow. So we don't have a, a culture of knowledge development, mm. a culture of learning, whether it's in the private sector, the public sector, or in general society. So we need to have a culture of learning, you know, in order for us to become uh, more of a successful country. Absolutely. And I think if parents can read books to their kids, mm. you know, it's, it's okay to, to watch television, uh, listen to radio with your kids, but also put aside that 30 minutes a day so that you can inculcate the culture, you know, from a younger age, yeah. uh, because that's going to improve um, their performance at school, mm -hmm. it's going to improve their personalities, their confidence, their concentration span. Mm -hmm. And there's a study that was released in 2013 in the UK Telegraph, which indicated that the single most important indicator of a teenager's future success is whether or not they read books for leisure. Wow. Well, let's hear from one of our viewers, Anonymous on WhatsApp says, the black population in South Africa needs to read more. We treat reading as if it is a chore. I gave up encouraging kids around me to read. It's as if some elders like it when children are not able to read properly. We need access to books. Uh, thank you to Anonymous for that comment. And, and maybe, Zanelli, you can say something about that, that uh, we need to, to have this culture. And I think Debucho said the same thing. Um, I agree mm. very much uh, so, but also I think that the Department of Education needs to play a huge role in this yeah. uh, in terms of um, the, the syllabus and the curriculum itself does not include a lot of local books mm. and we need that yeah. uh, for, uh, we need that a lot because in terms of our, of our fiction, especially fiction because it, 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 it comes with in different genres. Yeah. We have historical fiction, we have um, also series, books that are relating to a lot of people in the country yeah. and we need those books, those kind of books. We have a, a, a lot of authors that are writing children's books as well. We need those in the, in the, in the schools yeah. and that counts a lot because what we learn at school, we tend to want to do it at Absolutely. home as well. Yeah. So that counts a lot. And, and I think you're making a very good point there and I think with the wave now of conversations around Africanizing this and Africanizing that, mm. the education system, of course, is not left behind. And I would wonder what your thoughts are about that because there have been talks about certain materials uh, that don't really relate to who we are as Africans and maybe introducing more books within the curriculums of schools that speak to who we are, that speak our languages, you know, that, that really represent us in every way, shape and form. That could also propel us in the right direction. Yeah, so that's, that's a critical point. Um, if you look at... Um 
development of any continent, you will find that the biggest trading partners of the most successful nations are their neighboring countries. Yeah. Now, we would exclude China and the U.S. because they're each other's biggest trading partners. Mm. But it's, it's the way, that's the way it is all over the, the globe. Yeah. Now, in, in Africa, you know, we're not having a, a culture where um, we learn about each other's countries. We're not even having a culture of learning our own history. Mm. So our own history is not in the syllabus. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why it would take more than 22 years, you know, to change the syllabus yeah. so that you can now teach people to have a, a better sense of themselves. Mm. On top of that, you know, issues like racism, gender uh, violence, a lot of these social issues that we're faced with, you know, to a certain extent, and not largely, but to a certain extent, it can be addressed by teaching people their history. Mm. What is the history of matriarchy in African culture? Yeah. You know, what is the history of the development of science and maths and architecture, yeah. you know, in the African context? Now, you have young people who do not want to be maybe mathematicians or scientists because they don't believe in themselves. Right. And they don't believe in themselves because they haven't been taught their history. Mm. So Zainele has overlooked herself. I think her book should be in the syllabus of, of the school. Mm. You know, she, she had her books right here. They should be in the syllabus. Mm. She has a children's book. She has, you know, another novel. They should be in the syllabus. Mm. And so it should become easy for African authors to get their books in the syllabus so that we can encourage a culture of le learning African literature. Where do we start? Where do we begin? I mean, do we go to the department? I mean, you've spoken about the Department of Education, basic education, higher education, and all of that. Um, is that is that our starting point? Where do we where do we begin? I I think so. I think there is a starting point. Yeah. However, we need um, we need response from them as well because yeah. we do have a South African book fair. We had the South African book fair recently, and uh, the attendance wasn't as great as we expected it to be. Mm. But it, but it was quite good. We had a lot of people there. However, we really need. I don't know. We just need everyone involved. We need yeah. everyone coming in, and we have to work together at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And, and I want us to also talk about, you know, this is another conversation uh, that always comes up when we talk about reading and when we talk about um, whether or not people are reading enough um, and the expensive books that there are out there and people not buying books and all of that. But that's the, the, the question around the languages that books are written in. And, of course, uh, we, we can have a whole debate about... Um, whether or not that is impactful and 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 but how much of a factor according to you is that if we're talking about me as umkosa and this is what i speak and having very limited options in terms of what i can absorb as reading material for leisure well look um language is the reservoir of culture and culture informs most of our decisions you know it, it informs our lifestyle it informs how we resolve problems. And so if we are not able to write books in our languages, we can't preserve our culture. Mm. And so it, it is critical. You know, um, we cannot continue to become copycats of the world. Absolutely. We should be embracing our diverse cultures and sharing them to the world because that's what we have to offer the world. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, you know, even beyond that, um, we, we have to look around. Even if you are reading a book, you know, in English, it should be Africanized content first. Yeah. We need an Afrocentric approach to the culture of reading books. And we take your questions and comments after the break. Don't go anywhere.